risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to all of you on this blessed Easter morning as we once again celebrate our Lord's resurrection from the dead. As you see, I have lit the two candles on the altar, normally only lit when we have communion, but for today, I thought I'd like them to remind you that through our Savior Jesus Christ, we have life, and that we look forward to that day when we celebrate that feast with him in his kingdom for eternity. We join now in singing our first hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We join in singing, This is the Feast.
pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in singing the Alleluia as we read the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for the fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come 
See the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now join in singing our hymn of the day.
mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A 1914 Robert Frost poem describes a wall separating two neighbors. The neighbors talk as they walk along the stone fence line. It's the spring of the year, and as they do every spring, together they mend the various places where frost, hunters, and other things have broken the wall. In some places, not one stone is left on another. As they go about their work, our neighbor, one neighbor, wanders to the other if the wall really is of any value. One neighbor grows pine trees, the other apple trees. Neither has any livestock, so there's no need, nothing that needs to be kept in nor have they any great need to keep intruders out. Yet, year after year, they rebuild the wall because, as many people have observed, a wall between properties keeps just the right peace and harmony between neighbors. Or does it? It's maybe just what people Assume. It is in the world. Fences and walls are almost everywhere. Today, as you think about what's going on in the world, you may not be thinking of a stone wall or even a fence, but that invisible wall that keeps us separated from one another. We have been given a wall to keep us apart, in some ways to protect us from spreading disease. So from the Great Wall of China to the little picket fence surrounding a vegetable garden, walls are there. Fences and walls are almost everywhere. Even in our first reading this Easter Sunday is a reading about a fence that existed for a very long time. The wall separating the people of Israel from all the people of other nations on earth. While this was not a physical wall, it was nonetheless very real. And like a lot of walls, it was first built for good purposes. God wanted his people to be se separated from other nations. They were not to worship the gods of those nations, not to follow their ways, not even to marry outside the people of Israel. The Apostle Peter was a man who knew that wall very well. He knew what side of the wall he was to be on. And like one of the neighbors in the poem, Peter probably would have thought that the wall kept everyone's relationship at just the right distance. But one day, he learned the wall had outlived its usefulness. One day, Peter received a perplexing vision. On a white sheet that came down from heavens, that was lowered down from the heavens, he saw all kinds of animals and birds. These were animals and birds that he had been taught not to eat. Animals and birds from the other side of the fence, so to speak. Gentiles might eat these animals and birds, but no self-respecting Jew would ever even touch them. Then three times he was told, rise, kill, and eat. Three times he refused and protested, by no means, 
No way would he mingle the things that are unclean with those things that are clean. But three times he heard what God has made clean. Do not call common. As Peter contemplated this vision, all of a sudden there was a knock at his door. He opened that door to Gentiles, Gentile visitors, requesting of him to go with them. Would Peter go to meet a whole gathering of Gentiles? The Holy Spirit instructed him to go without hesitation. And with that, Peter found himself in the presence of a Roman centurion and his household. It was in this household of a man named Cornelius that Jesus, uh, that Peter came to be with those on the other side of the wall. When Peter arrived at this Gentile home, the puzzle began to be solved. He opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. He is Lord of all. And it turns out God loves the people on both sides of the fence, both sides of the wall. It turns out that while God had created the wall between the Jews and the Gentiles, God did not love that wall. And so, more than frost or hunters or anything else, God once and for all shook things up to break that wall down. The shakeup that broke down the fence between Jews and Gentiles began on a Sunday morning at a tomb on the outskirts of Jerusalem. Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary went to the tomb. As they approached that tomb, where Jesus of Nazareth had been laid to rest following his crucifixion three days before, an earthquake, a great earthquake, happened. And an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and the heavy stone that walled off the tomb from the rest of the world was rolled away. Peter reflects on this. On those three days, um, as he get is short and to the point, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear. Moses had once wrote and said, a hanged man is cursed by God. But Jesus deserved no curse. Instead, as Peter proclaimed a bit earlier in his sermon, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Yet despite all the good Jesus had done, there were many who were threatened by Jesus. They saw him as one breaking down walls between Jews and Gentiles, between sinners and holy people, between insiders and outsiders. For it is with all these people Jesus hung out with. And to many this was dangerous. The leaders of the people feared that if he had too many followers, he might provoke the Romans to come to Jerusalem and tear down the walls and destroy the people with inside those walls. So they put Jesus 
to death by hanging him on a tree. They put him under a curse. But their curse wasn't all that important. The real curse was that curse that put Jesus on that tree. That curse was a curse of sin, the curse of all humanity. A curse going way back to the day when our first parents were expelled from the Garden of Eden for their sin. And the wall went up. God placed his cherubim with a flaming sword preventing them or any of their descendants from returning to the tree of life in the midst of the garden. A wall actually to protect the people, but a wall nonetheless that God did not let. God put in place that living angelical wall as a sign of his justice. But the wall is never meant to be permanent. God wanted to destroy that wall. So God put all of the curse of that wall on his son, hanging him on a tree outside Jerusalem on a bleak and dark Friday. And for a time, the Son of God would even be walled off from the Father forsaken so that the gates of hell might never prevail against God's people. So today on Easter, beginning with the earthquake in the garden, the walls start coming down. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day. God raised the son who was cursed who took upon himself our curse, the curse of sin. But that wall crumbled as Jesus burst forth from the tomb. Death no longer has the last word. The grave is no longer permanent. God raised Jesus, and now all who live and believe in him will rise, for he is the resurrection and the life. Each one of us in our baptism has torn down that wall. God has taken the wall away so that we now rise to new life as a child of God. You could say you have went from death to life. The aftershocks of that first Easter earthquake continued to topple walls. The wall between God and people symbolized by the angel with the fiery sword outside of the Garden of Eden has begun to fall. To be sure, we are not yet in paradise and able to eat freely of the tree of life. But already, like Peter and the other disciples, we are able to eat and drink with the risen Christ. We look forward to that day when the wall of this pandemic comes down and we, we may once again meet our Savior at his table and enjoy that wonderful meal. On the day of his resurrection, Jesus ate just like you and I with his disciples, a meal of broiled fish. He ate that meal to show that he wasn't a ghost, but that he was truly living, breathing, alive. We are invited to feast at his table upon his body and his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And in that we share the feast of victory over sin, death, and Satan as a foretaste of that day when we will eat again from the tree of life in the midst of paradise.
This isn't for a select few people. A people walled off from the rest of the world. No, as Peter proclaims about Jesus, to him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins through his name. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ as their Savior, the one who has died in their place for their sin and has risen to new life, new life that he gives to all those who believe, is theirs. We do have the forgiveness of sins. We do have life eternal. Everyone, everyone who believes in Jesus. It was seen in the tearing down of that most sacred wall in all Judaism. That wall that was in the temple. That wall of a thick curtain hung between the holy place and the most holy place. A place where only priests were allowed, the high priest, once a year. As Jesus died, that wall was torn, top to bottom. That wall that separated us from our God has been torn down in Jesus' death. On Good Friday, Jesus breathed his last. That temple curtain was torn in two. Christ made the greatest sacrifice with his own blood, and with that, everything changed. No longer does a priest offer the atoning sacrifice for our sin. The blood of Christ is the once for all sacrifice. And God freely forgives you, me, and everyone who believes in Christ. Someone knew better than to think there had to be a wall. And that someone is our God, who shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him, and does what is right is acceptable to him. The earthquake that broke open the tomb that first Easter morning is still breaking down walls. Walls between us and our God. Walls between neighbors. Walls of addiction, illness, death, culture, and class. Walls even of a pandemic that keep us apart. Walls that hem us in and the walls that keep us out. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, the wall of sin has been torn down and we do have forgiveness and life. Everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Everyone, even you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of God, we confess our faith in the one true God in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, <coughs> who for us men 
and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, Make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us, and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. We pray especially here at Trinity that you would send us another pastoral shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of our President, Donald Trump, our Governor, Tim Walsh, the Congress of the United States, including State Representative Rod Hamilton, and all state and local elected fit officials. Guide them according to your word, that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, look with favor on those who celebrate birthdays, especially Mike Money, and all those who celebrate baptismal birthdays, including Jordan Bergman, Greg Hildebrandt, Mace Herrick, Spence Kambangsa, Bryce Bolt, Hannah Bergling, Shanoa Jansen, Claire Adrian, Ron Fre Fredrickson. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for another year of married life together for Earl and Gladys. Gladys. Open their hearts always to receive more of your love, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth, and those who mourn. We pray especially for Dwayne Bond, 
Naomi Oteen, Bernice Christoffel, Dorothy Dunger, Marilyn File, Addison Jensen, Bob Jass, Lois Lee, Mike Money, Kathy Swallen, Laura Swanson, Carla Went, and the family of Ken Fast, brother of Myron Fast, who died on Thursday. Attend to the daily cares and needs of Darla Cruiser, Michelle Mullenbrook, the Joey Mori family, Steve and Marsha Penner, Monica Schrader, Dan and Charlotte Seuss. Give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for the glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings we give. Increase in the hearts of your people delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us, with Job, the solemn expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with Him in His eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death, and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. We humbly pray that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn.
take this opportunity to wish all of you a very happy and blessed Easter. And may you celebrate the resurrection of our Lord throughout your lives. Just a note, um, we had planned today to celebrate uh, this feast of our Lord with Holy Communion. Uh, but after discussing it uh, with the elders, uh, myself and I, myself and them, uh, decided that uh, for now we would hold off, looking forward to that great day when the stay at home, the social distancing will be lifted and we once again can join in the victory of our Lord over sickness and death. Another reminder, just to let you know, even though we are not gathering, we still need your tithes and offerings. Um, you can send those to the church uh, or give the office a call and we can give you suggestions how you get those offerings to the church. Once again, God's blessings to all of you on this, the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord.